Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I think there was uh, some technical issues. So there were some uh, about 10 minute delays. Uh, uh, sorry about that. But again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today in Toolbox Tuesday session on GIS modeling and analytics in regional planning. Uh, my name is Jung So. I'm a planning uh, supervisor uh, here at SCAG. Uh, leading the data and visualization business unit, which support uh, SCAG planning division CIS program. Oh, by the way, I, I see a lady, hands up. Could you unmute yourself? Or is that by accident? All right, I guess. Okay, let me uh, continue. So uh, I also have my colleague, uh, Mengdi Lee, uh, for today's presentation. Uh, Mengdi, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you, John. Uh, my name is Mandy Lee. I'm a senior regional planner at SCAG GIS unit, modeling and forecasting department as well. I'm working on regional GIS data development um, and also provide technical GIS support um, SCAG planning work. Thank you. Thank you. So before we uh, start today's uh, session, uh, we encourage you to type uh, your name and uh, organization into the chat box so that we may know uh, who is in this room. And okay, so, Andy, can we go to uh, next? Oh, maybe I can control here. Yeah, okay. Oops. So yeah, so uh, here is uh, some uh, logistics uh, for today's meeting. So uh, this meeting is anticipated to be a little bit over an hour and uh, it is being recorded and all participant uh, lines will be uh, muted. Uh, and there will be a Q and A session at the end of the session. And then, uh, but if you have question during the presentation, uh, please type it into the chat box or press the, the raise hand function. And we are happy to answer questions during the presentation. But if we, you know, in case you know we miss any questions during the presentation, uh, we will answer those questions uh, at the end of the presentation. And also a recording of this uh, toolbox today session in the slide will be posted on the SCAG website. Uh, and uh, also uh, we will the link will be sent to everyone who has registered. Uh, after the event. So here is the uh, today's uh, Toolbox Tuesday session agenda. So today we will share with you about some uh, background information about SCAG, who we are and the, what we do. Uh, and also, and then we will go over the key GIS functions uh, in regional planning, highlighting some a key GIS product uh, that SCAG developed for its regional planning process. And then my colleague, uh, Mengdi Lee, she will uh, share with you about SCAG's GIS modeling and analytics uh, method and technique. And also she will explain uh, how SCAG step uh, have leveraged ArcGIS with uh, GIS programming skills for uh, our GIS data development and spatial analysis and workflow automation and also data visualization. And then also to help you to get a uh, better picture of you know, what you know, SCAG's GIS programming and automation workflow, workflow look like. So Mengdi will also share with you some uh, demos as well. And then we will have a Q&A session. So for those who are not familiar with SCAG, let me just first, Briefly, a very briefly explain about uh, SCAG. So SCAG stands for Southern California Association of Government, and we are the, the largest uh, MPO, uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization in the country, which consists of uh, 191 cities and six counties. And our region spans approximately 36,000 square miles, and there are about or 90 million uh, people, uh, the resident living in the SCAG uh, region. And it's almost uh, half of the state uh, total population. And the uh, SCAG region, we generate about 1,406 
billion dollars in 2021. And uh, so if SCAC were a country, it would be uh, the 16th largest economy in the world. And one thing I like to highlight uh, about SCAC region is that there are over uh, 5 million parcels in the SCAC region. And one of the, the SCAC's major data product that we will explain is, is regional uh, land use data uh, uh, product, which contains general plans, specific plan, and then zoning and uh, Egyptian land use information on those individual 5 million uh, parcel polygons. And on the right hand side, you can see SCAC's regional guide where you can find some uh, key indicators of SCAC region. Uh, Mengdeep uh, just put the, the link uh, to the SCAC regional guide in the chat box. So for those who are interested in, uh, please click the link and then you, can, you should be able to find the uh, uh, the latest uh, 2023 uh, SCAC regional guide. So our region, we, we face unprecedented challenges as shown in this uh, slide, very complicated uh, slide. So these challenges, it, it threatens our collective future and visions and require, you know, informed and thoughtful insight to you know, for us to properly tackle those challenges. So as a whole, as a region, we are collectively responsible for the, for the future of our region. And then we, you know, and that involves uh, cross agents collaborations in addressing those challenges under our common vision. And here you can see, these are some of the, the major regional issues that Southern California uh, faces. You know, first, we need to uh, provide safe and efficient uh, mobility and access to regional destinations to people and also goods. And also, we need accessible and affordable housing for the people uh, at all income levels. And also, we need to meet the federal clean air target and ensure the clean air at the local level as well. And also we are working with our partners to plan and implement a clean and efficient regional goods movement system that result in jobs and economic development. And also we uh, facilitate sustainable and resilient development that meets the needs of our diverse region. And we also need to ensure uh, our region gets a fair share uh, and improve the uh, access to federal and state and non-governmental funding. And through the, also we focus on equity and social justice uh, subject as well. And also recently our region is also working on uh, accessible and affordable high-speed internet access anywhere within our region. So to, to consider and address the, the local and regional uh, planning issues from, from holistic uh, perspective, we should view our region as a single uh, integrated system. And obviously it requires more coordinated uh, planning and engagement and data sharing. So for SCAC, uh, our, our regional planning and policy success, it starts from a, a local planning effort. So the, the success of our, of our region is definitely tied to the ability of local jurisdictions to plan for their own futures and also share those plan and their data with the regional planning agencies like SCAC. But there are also challenges you know, in this cycle because local jurisdictions, are re they are required to update their general plan, but many are struggling to do so with because of, you know, they have limited in-house resources and uh, tools. So according to SCAC's uh, recent survey, roughly 70% of local jurisdiction lack the technical step to analyze data and then about 43% had no in-house uh, GIS support. Uh, so as a result, about 84% of local jurisdiction in the SCAC region shared data through email or other you know, method of direct communication. So those indicators you know, suggest that there's a need uh, for a regional data and information system to facilitate and streamline in developing the regional plan like the Connect SoCal. 
So what, what is connexal cost? Connexal cost is our regional uh, long range uh, plan. It is regional transportation plan and sustainable communities strategy, so-called RTP, uh, SCS. So it is a long range uh, visioning plan that balance future mobility and then uh, the environment and communities and economic goals. So on this slide, you know, we listed some of the examples of our, how we move forward on those each of uh, these goals. So SCAC developed is a uh, connect so call uh, RTP SCS every four years. And the, the last uh, plan was adopted in, uh, to, in the year 2020. And SCAG is currently in process of developing uh, the next connect so call plan, which is expected to be adopted uh, in, uh, in the year 2024. So again, uh, one of the important component in uh, developing uh, is regional plan. Uh, it is data. So SCAG, you know, we work very closely with our 197 local jurisdictions to share uh, data with them and to solicit uh, feedback from uh, those local plan planners uh, in preparation for our uh, Connect so-called plan development. So we call that process as local data exchange process, LDX process. So through this LDX process, we specifically you know, aim to solicit local feedback, their input, and any, any update on, on our data, especially the land use data and then gross forecasting data. And also we uh, seek feedback and uh, any kinds of correction or editing you know, opportunities on uh, various uh, our uh, data layers. And also we present opportunity to align the local and uh, regional uh, regions. So in the, uh, the image on, the, on your right side is a SCAG RDP uh, LDX web and LDX editor tool, as well as SCAG uh, data map book. So SCAG developed those kinds of tools or product to facilitate uh, the LDX process. So GIS for regional planning. So GIS, you know, geographic information system is now widely used in planning field. And many planners these days are quite familiar with uh, terms like location intelligence, which, uh, which is facilitated by, by the use of GIS tools and techniques uh, to drive meaningful insight from geospatial data for to, to, to solve the problems in our uh, world. But GIS is, is not just a map, it is more than just a mapping. I mean, mapping is, of course, it is important component in GIS, but GIS is more, is so much more than uh, that. And GIS platform have various capabilities that can be applied uh, to planning, such as data management and visualization, and analysis and modeling, and also data sharing and uh, engagement tool uh, development. So SCAG has been leveraging our uh, its regional planning and policy analysis with these kind of GIS capabilities. So in the following uh, three slides, uh, I will share some examples of GIS product that SCAG developed uh, for its regional planning. And then uh, my colleague, Mengdi Li, uh, we'll uh, go deep into uh, in all those details, uh, how SCAG uh, actually utilize GIS programming and automation method and techniques. So I, I believe some of you may be familiar now with uh, RDP, the Regional Data Platform. So RDP is a system uh, for collaborative data sharing and planning uh, that is designed or to facilitate uh, better and more efficient uh, planning at all level from the city level, county level, and also to the uh, regional level. So RDP was developed to strengthen you know, local planning practice through, uh, through this uh, modern planning tools so that you know, SCAG is sharing these kind of tools with local jurisdiction to support their local planning process. And also another goal is to enhance the regional planning process by streamlining the, the collection and integration of the data between local agencies and also uh, SCAG. And also 
the other goal is to promote the transparency and then interagency collaboration uh, to foster more inclusive and equitable and sustainable regional planning uh, practices. So with that, uh, this system has three main components, accessible data and information, and planning and engagement tool, and also data sharing uh, tool and workflow. And I will put the, the link uh, of RDP here in the chat box. So if you haven't visited the SCAG RDP uh, website, you may wanna uh, check that uh, the link. And then another product is the data map book. Uh, so data map book, we developed uh, this data map book for our uh, RTP SCS uh, the process. So SCAG has produced this uh, data map books since 2012 RTP SCS uh, plan development process. So for each RTP SCS uh, planning cycle, we, we have produced 197 data map books one uh, per each local jurisdiction jurisdictions in the SCAG region. So the goal is to help our local planners uh, better understand the sources and methodologies and context of SCAG's GIS data set. And actually when, when, I, when I joined the SCAG uh, in 2011, so I've been working for SCAG about uh, 12, year, 12 years and when I just joined the SCAG in 2011, I think it was February 2011, SCAG GIS team was actually working on the, on the data map book uh, for the 2012 RTP SS local input process. And back then, uh, we, I think there were about 20 maps uh, uh, in the individual data map book. So about 4,000 4, uh, maps. Need, needed to be created for the 197 data map books. Back then, SCAG didn't have the, oh, this kind of GIS programming or automation skills. So what we did was we actually created all those uh, over uh, about 4,000 maps uh, manually. And then, uh, so sometimes, you know, our GIS team, our staff had to, uh, work on some extra hours to create those maps, but it was not just about the time and labor. Uh, through because of it was a manual process, we also observed some inconsistent layout, map layout, or some of the incorrect uh, mapping because it it was handled manually. So, but uh, for since then we developed. Uh, GIS automation process for the uh, visualization. So Mengdi will uh, explain all those details uh, later. But so for this Connexo Call 2024, uh, 2024 Connexo Call LDX process, we uh, there are about uh, 30 maps uh, created for individual jurisdictions, which means uh, SCAG, uh, we needed to create approximately 6,000 maps for the entire data map books. So imagine, you know, you, we are creating those 6,000 maps manually, and it is not just one-time production. Uh, we usually create three times, preliminary data map book, draft, draft uh, data map book, and the final data map book. So you can uh, do math, 6,000 maps times uh, uh, three. So, which requires a lot of time and uh, step labors. But we utilize uh, GIS programming and automation skills and method to, to streamline all those process. So for the data map book, I also put the, the link in the chat box. So for those who are interested in, you guys can go and check uh, 197 data map books that we posted in the SCAG LDX uh, pages. So now, uh, Mengdi Lee will explain about uh, uh, I'm sorry, not, uh, she will also explain about the data map workflow later. So, but the, the other data product that I like to also introduce is the, the data. So I just introduced the RDP and data map book, uh, uh, which was utilized for SCAX planning, regional planning. Uh, but to make those product valuable is the data behind the 
behind those products. So, uh, so I'd like to highlight SCX uh, GIS data product here. Uh, and among those GIS, SCX GIS data product, uh, the most widely and frequently utilized would be the SCX regional land use data. We developed the uh, smart land information system uh, through which we developed the regional land use information and data model. So our land use, regional land use information, uh, it contains uh, a parcel level uh, land use information for 197 local jurisdictions, the so six counties and 191 cities, so at the parcel level. And the land use information includes general plan land use and specific plan land use and zoning and existing land use, but we also uh, developed other value added uh, land information such as public owned land and uh, building uh, characteristics and all those resource area related uh, information as well. So as I mentioned earlier, there are over 5 million parcels in the SCAC region and we coded and we standardized uh, those, our land use information into those 5 million uh, parcels and that process is pretty much impossible if you uh, want to handle uh, manually. So SCAG also developed a workflow uh, utilizing a GIS programming to, to streamline all those data manipulation and update process. So uh, SCAG usually developed our land use data uh, every four years you know, for our RTPSS, but SCAG also recently uh, initiated the annual land use data. So basically we are trying to develop land use data annually, uh, uh, primarily utilizing the county assessors uh, tax, uh, tax files using their land use code and also other uh, property information as well. And in addition to our land use information, uh, we also developed uh, uh, gross related data that we listed here and also we SCAG also developed the resource areas and also translation related uh, data as well. So uh, I believe from now on you guys can enjoy the, the fun part. So Mengdi Lee will uh, uh, explain about SCAG GIS modeling and analytics technique and also method and also she will share some uh, demos uh, to show you how SCAG utilized those techniques. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, this session will cover some work examples and our experience in SCAG GIS modeling and analytics. Um, so why programming is important in GIS work? Uh, first of all, the analytical reason. For most of the time, there's no out-of-box solution and pro programming gives a lot of flexibility to customize available geospatial tool to achieve certain goal. And automation is another reason. Nobody likes repetitive works. Uh, we'd love to have some, something as simple as a for loop to do the repeat work for us or something can assemble the available tool together to simply produce the result using the consistent methodology every time we need it. And uh, lastly, we want to create tools that, that can be used um, easily uh, with easy, easy in user interface and the tools can be used by everyone, not only GIS expert. That, these are also the reason why SCAG is utilizing GIS programming in our planning work. We are dedicated in developing effective GIS workflow to deal with the high volume regional geospatial data and streamline the repetitive comp complicated geoprocessing and develop an efficient automated workflow for the complicated tasks. We will dive into more details um, in the next several slides and also in the next demo session. Um, with the GIS programming, we save a lot of staff time and labor, uh, and we have better data quality, data accuracy, and consistency. So GIS programming is extremely efficient for high volume data processing. In the, in the preparation for regional land use data sets, as John mentioned previously, we are dealing with 5 million parcels. 
and we collect this parcel level land use information from multiple sources and consolidate it into consistent parcel level land use for all of our jurisdictions. And with GIS programming for parcel data management, we basically streamlined the repetitive, complicated data manipulation, and we standardized the process that we convert local land use code to SCAG standardized land use classification. And we develop scripts to ensure the data consistency and accuracy. Um, like when we are doing the data cleanup, feature comparison, and a spatial match, et cetera. Here are some uh, screenshots of, our, our, uh, of the scripts we have been using. Um, we can show you more in the demo session. Uh, we will run some scripts to show you how we are using Python scripting to sc streamline the workflow. Um, and we also use the JS programming in spatial analysis and the geo processing. Um, our staff develop high quality transit area and transit priority area, the HQTA and TPA methodology. It identifies the intersection of two or more major bus routes with the frequency of service interval of 15 minutes or less during the peak period. The, the script also counts the stops within 500 feet buffer of over 8,000 intersections of high quality bus routes and calculate the angles of high quality bus routes inter intersections. You see, there are many uh, conditions we are applied in this methodology. So our staff coded the completed logics in Python and applied the tools like ArcPy um, and other Python libraries to streamline the entire process. And for Connect SoCal, um, we prepared this HQTA and TPA data sets for multiple scenarios, including the base year, uh, the baseline, and the plan year. We can easily generate them with a consistent methodology coded in the script. And another example we would like to show you um, is when we are doing the growth strategy analysis for Connect SoCal. Um, it estimated the household and employment growth in various land use strategies for different focusing scenarios. So every time we have a new set of growth focusing numbers, we will apply this kind of analysis to see the household and employment allocation in different land use and scenarios. Um, so the Python scripts really streamline the, the repetitive product process and ensure the consistent methodology was applied in each round of analysis. So also after each run, we will have a nice report as shown here. It's ready to use. And we also apply the JS programming um, in, the, in the local data exchange process as John mentioned previously. Uh, we try to, ideally we will have, uh, ideally we hope to have a, a process um, like building a data pipeline with our local jurisdictions um, and uh, communicate with each other in a real time. Uh, but currently we are, we are still working on to achieve that goal. And here we are building some little tools to facilitate this process. Uh, here we are for this round of local data exchange process, we launched the LDX tool uh, in the regional data platform and we communicate with our local jurisdiction through this tool. And we collect a lot of good feedbacks from our local jurisdictions. And Python scripts here really helped us to automate the process from, from, the, pro from the data collection, uh, data consolidation, and the process of updating our regional land use data sets and the quality control part of the data sets. Uh, we will delve into a lot, a lot more details in the demo session for this pro process. Um, we basically use script to handle more than a thousand data inputs and consolidate, consolidate them into a consistent, consistent format. And pro, and with the with the Python scripting, it also provides a lot of flexibility dealing with the inputs of different formats because our local jurisdictions. It, um, usually working on different kind of um, data. So um, the format of the inputs may be different. Um, it also streamlined the repetitive drill processing. Um, and another use case 
we would like to share with you is the JS programming for data visualization. Like John just mentioned previously, um, before we launch this automated process, our staff basically uh, created those maps manually. So our staff coming up with this uh, solution applied the data-driven page and the Python scripting to streamline this process. Um, so here with this methodology, we only need to create and update the map templates for different map layers as shown here. Um, with the data-driven page enabled, we can use Python script to run um, and uh, create 119 maps for each topic. Though we only need to run the script and create the maps, uh, but we still need to click uh, the scripts for more than 30 times because we have different 30 different land use map layers. Um, and our staff create another main script that will run all these little scripts together one by one. Um, and after this run, we will have all the maps ready for each topic. And we will run another script that will basically assemble this map together for each local jurisdiction. And after we have this combined, combined maps ready, we have another script that will combine the customized tags, figures, front page, back page. Uh, we will have this um, data map book ready for 197 local jurisdictions. And another beautiful part of this workflow is that when we were when we were running this scripts, our staff are free to do other tasks. So we, we probably can can do some other things. And after we come back, everything is ready. Um, let's take a quick look at the some of the sample pages in our data map book. And you are also encouraged to explore the link that John just shared uh, for our local data exchange process. We have this kind of data map for all of, all of our uh, member agencies. Um, okay, let's move on to the next demo session. Sorry, I think I clicked too much, yeah. Um, my coworker Jennifer will show us a pre-recorded demo for the JS programming used in the local data exchange workflow. Um, yeah, um, Jennifer, could you please share the the video? Thank you. Hello everyone. In this demo, I'm going to show you some of the JS programming techniques used in the local data exchange process for the Connect SoCal 2024, the regional transportation plan preparation. Um, it covers how we collect and consolidate the local inputs we receive from the regional data platform. Some of the scripts we used in incorporate these inputs to our land use data sets um, and uh, Lastly, I'd love to share with you some of the JS programming uh, used in the quality control. So, so in this round of the Canuck SoCal, we launched local data exchange tool in regional data platform that you may know. Um, we use this tool to communicate with our local jurisdictions so they can submit data edits, data feedback, or even share their data files with us. Uh, we, we receive over a thousand of job submission for more than 30 layers. And uh, this local data exchange tool powered by ArcGIS Workflow Manager, which is really new to our agency. So how do we uh, review and incorporate this great amount of inputs given limited staff who are currently working on uh, these data sets? So our staff really look into the available documentations available on the on the Azure, Azure website. Uh, and we come up with this quick turnaround. Um, this script applied 
ArcGIS Python API, ArcGIS Web, uh, REST API, ArcGIS Workflow Manager API, and also ArcGIS Geo Accessor, uh, especially the Spatial Enabled Pandas Data Frame. Uh, basically, this script will look into all the inputs we available on our regional data platform server and extracts all the edits and consolidated by inputs, uh, by input types and layer type. And we save as a commonly used JS feature layer in a geo database. Um, I won't run the script uh, since it would, it would take hours to uh, complete, um, given the size of the jobs and uh, the size of the geospatial data. But uh, I want to share this experience because uh, Python really provides this flexibility and help us save a lot of staff time. Um, as our staff don't have to search for by the job ID on the website um, and load every time into the ArcGIS Pro to review the data. With the consolidated data sets, it's easy to incorporate in one time, especially for some layers. Um, so after we consolidated the input data sets, so how do we incorporate this input to our regional data sets, especially for the land use data sets? Um, the first th first tool we would like to share with you is we is that we develop to facilitate data conversion. Uh, we receive many inputs and they are in different formats. It's common to see some format that we are not familiar with. So here Python really helps us a lot. One example is that we we'll like to share we we'll like to show you is how Python enabled us to customize the data conversion tool from KML to feature layer. Um, in this round of local input process, we, we receive a uh, input from our local jurisdiction, which is a KML file, KML file containing the zoning zoning land use uh, zoning code of our local jurisdiction. So we convert that to a feature layer using the geoprocessing tool KML to layer the default tool provided by Azuri. But after we open the final product, uh, open the output product, there seems no available information that we could use to, to update our data sets. You see the name field has a lot of pre-smart. Um, and after we explore the database a little bit, we find there's a, a field called pop-up info. It contains a HTML table in this field. So how do we extract this information in the pop-up info? It is a table in table. How do we flat this? So here comes the Python. Um, we use Python to loop through all the parcels and create a new fields for the fields that we want to keep and extract that information. And this tool, with this tool, all the information we need to provide is the location of the KMZ file and the field we want to update. After providing this information, the script will create a geo database with the KMZ name. So it will create a zoning underscore December 2022 geo database and save the updated polygon in that geo database with the information we want to extract. So let's run this script. Let's see the results. It will come up um, shortly in a few seconds. Okay, it completed. Let me close this one and close this. Sorry. Close this one. You see, this is the original data. Let's see the uh, the results with our customized tool. Let's refresh this folder. After refresh, we see this new geo database created by the script. And it also have a polygon here. Let's open it up. You see there's a zoning in this updated field. That's something we can use 
and easy to work with. So we have a feature layer that with the zone information, we are easy to work with. So how do we incorporate this information to our Skag.js data? The next tool I'd like to show you is how we uh, automate the process uh, to do a spatial join, to assign land use um, to our Skag parcel. Um, you see, uh, this new added layer is Skag city layer. Um, the parcel shapes look a different, look a little bit different than the city input. So we would need to at least run the intersect or spatial join, um, and and do um, then do the assigning based on the overlapping area. Um, the second tool I would like to share with you, it will automate the process I just described. Um, so if a Skag parcel intersects with multiple city parcels, it will be assigned with a city land use that with the most overlapping area. Um, the default intersect tool from Azure will give a lot of slivers that we don't want. And sometimes the spatial drawing doesn't work quite in uh, quite correctly. Um, here, Python enables us to do the customized to come up with a customized tool that satisfies our needs. And uh, this tool we implemented uh, will only join by ID, so it's extremely fast, especially for cities with larger amount of parcels. Uh, and also, this tool only run in memory, so there's won't be there won't be intermediate product. Uh, we need to clean up every, so we don't need to clean up the the intermediate product after each analysis. Um, and the only thing you need to enter is the target feature that received this information, and the target field you want to create it in your target feature. And the input feature you receive from the uh, we receive from the local jurisdiction and field we are looking for information. Um, let me close this one. So we, as we are, uh, as we are writing information in, we'll write writing information in this layer. So let's close this one so we don't apply any lock. Uh, and let me copy the input feature to the same folder and uh, added a name a little bit. Um, so it will be, we name our features in the same, um, naming structure. So this one is the city name, zone name, uh, come out, and also this layer we received from the LDX process. So we have a suffix for that. So I think everything is ready. Let's run the script. So if you do the manually join or do the manual assi uh, assessment, um, I will take, if you're familiar with the entire process, probably you, I will take you at least 10 or 15 minutes for the city. But here you see it only cost nine seconds to complete this process. And let's see the final results. Let me re refresh the table. Here, let's, do, let's open the attribute table. So this is our data, our SCAP JS data. Uh, and here, every parcel, all the parcel has a has been assigned with the city in, input code. The only thing we need to do currently, we only need to compare the, with our current city code. We can do a simple comparison and update the field. Assume we have already updated everything. So you, he, you see here we are. Um, making edits on the city level feature class, um, not directly to the county level or regional level data sets. Um, there are many reasons we are doing this because 
um, the city level feature class is compact and easy to ma manipulate. And uh, the input we receive is by city and easy to split the work among team members based on that. Um, so after we updating the city level data sets, we would like to migrate to the county level data sets we are maintaining. Um, the third two tool uh, I'd like to share with you is the migrating tool. This tool uh, provides a very uh, easy to use interface. The only thing we you need to you need to enter is the city name and, and, and the county name. It will help you to do the entire um, data migration. Uh, so why why would we um, incorporate this uh, migration? Because sometimes the you know the the data sets can be really large. Uh, the joining and updating can take a lot of time and uh, for some land use layers, they have many attribute fields. That means you have to do the um, updating one by one and wait for there. Um, with this tool, you everything you need to do is enter the city and county name, and then you are free to do other tasks while the script is running. Let me show you how we use this. Okay, it will ask you to enter the county name. So here, this one we are taking Glendora as an example. Uh, it's in the LA County, and then we enter the city name, which is Glendora. If you type the wrong name, it will uh, a wrong name not not within the the county or not within the Skype area. It will give you error, um, and then you click OK. It will start to run. Help you to do the migration. Let's let's leave it here. Lastly, I'd like to show you here is a uh, how we use Python in quality control. After completing the land use update, we would like to make sure that the data consistency between our JS data and the land use correspondence table, sorry, correspondence table, the correspondence table with more land use information that help users to understand the code. So we want to make sure that J the JS data contains the correct information. Um, so if we do manual compare, it will include uh, extract information from this JS layer in this attribute table. Everything here you can see uh, the land use density and the year, all these fields, and then we remove all the duplicates, cop, and then we need to um, copy things from copy information from the correspondence table. As you can see here, we need to filter out, at least filter out the city. This one is Glendora. We need to filter, uh, filter city, city code and description, at least copy and paste in the in the same Excel sheet and do the comparison to the comparison one by one. Um, you see the entire workflow, if you're familiar with that, it could at least taking 10 or 15 minutes to do it. But with this little script, um, this checking consistency script, it will basically automate the process I just described. It will read, a, read information from correspondent table. It will read information from JS layer and then compare. So this tool is developed specifically for the general plan. So everything it were reading from the JS uh, layer and also the correspondent table of the JS of general plan. Um, and it's re really easy to use. All you need to do is enter the abbreviation of the county name, enter the city name, and, and uh, enter the location of the correspondence table. Then it will generate a report, Excel report for you uh, to check to check the work pl product. So here, let me tap in the county name and the city name. Click open. It will provide a report here. 
it will tell you how many discrepancies here. And if you pass, if you pass the check, it will say congrats, consistency check passed. If not, uh, it will ask you to go into this report to see if there's any discrepancy. Let me copy it and take. Let's take a quick look at this. Um, you see, uh, this is attribute table grabbed from the JS layer, and these are from the correspondence table, and these are the comparison field. Basically, this one is comparing, uh, this column is comparing the these two. Uh, if there's any discrepancy, it will flag with one. If not, it will be all zero. So this one, it seems like we passed the check, um, if there's any discrepancy, uh, it will flag with one and our staff can easily go into the certain code with a certain description. OK. And we have already plugged this tool, this little tool we developed previously uh, into our comprehensive data review. Um, and that's, that's also the, the beautiful part of uh, Python th script. Most of them we can reuse um, in and, and we can plug them into a uh, different use case, uh, especially if you are developing script with, with a defined function. It can be easily called. Uh, you can you can use that in your later work. Okay. Here's everything we would like to share for this demo session. We hope this session can be informative for you and give you some ideas in the JS workflow automation. Thank you for watching and we'd appreciate any comments or feedbacks. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Mengdi, for the great presentation and also thank you for sharing the, the demo. So. So this is it for uh, today's presentation. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, type it into uh, chat box or you can, uh, using the, the raise hand function in the Zoom, you can also ask questions, so. Yeah, I don't see any questions in the chat box and so just wanted to uh, highlight uh, uh, the benefit of this uh, GIS programming automation. Mengdi also briefly mentioned about it, but uh, it, it is not just about the time and labor uh, saving, because I mean, it tremendously saves step time and step effort. Like Mengdi just mentioned, it saves a lot of time and effort, but another important aspect is the quality of data and then product. So, uh, so, okay, so I see hands up from David. Could you introduce yourself and yeah, ask your question, please? Yeah, thanks, Chung. Hi, everyone. This is David Mariscal. I'm with KOA. Um, we're a consulting firm and we use JS a lot in our active transportation work. Uh, just a couple of clarifying questions. One is, are these products already available in two for the coding portion um, in the present in the demo that we just saw right now. Um, will the users be responsible for uh, creating that code or will this the code for like the functions that were just demonstrated be provided and merely copy and pasted from a forum onto the the uh, the, the GIS program? Yes, I, I can answer to your question, David, and Mengdi, if you have any opinion, you can also chime in. So yeah, the coding that we just shared with uh, in this uh, presentation, yeah, it is definitely available. So SCAG as a public agency, we can uh, definitely share our uh, Python script uh, with external users. But uh, like Mengdi briefly mentioned, uh, sometimes the user need to uh, make some uh, edit, like for example, the file location or 
uh, variable names, but uh, but we can definitely share uh, the Python script so that uh, anyone who are interested in can uh, copy and paste it and then make some uh, modifications uh, to to make it fit uh, for your data folder system and the file name, etc. That does that answer to your question, David? Yeah, that does. Thanks, Chung. Sure. Thanks. And then uh, I see some questions in the chat uh, box. So, will the will today's recording be available? Yes. Uh, after this event, uh, the recording and the slide will be available. It will be po uh, posted on the SCAC uh, website. Uh, Will the demo video be shared? It should be part of the, the presentation recording. So yeah, it should be available. So, and another question I see is, is there someone at SCAG uh, to contact for help with a specific project needed uh, for this? Uh, SCAG as a public agency, we, we do provide uh, GIS uh, technical services for not only for uh, in SCAG internal step, but also uh, our stakeholders, local jurisdictions, and also uh, public. Uh, so yeah, we can SCAG uh, step can uh, uh, provide those kind of support. You know, if there are anyone who kind of needs some support in terms of uh, GIS programming and workflow uh, streamline. So okay. yeah, I know it is quite a bit of information that probably understand, you know, we are still also digesting. There are still a lot of ways to go actually for us. Yeah, so yeah, I totally understand. So, okay. So another question is, uh, can you speak to how you create QC such large volumes of data products? So Wendy, you wanna respond? Yeah, uh, yeah, I can respond to this question. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, I will take uh, our specific plan uh, data sets as an example. So for a specific plan, we have parcel level data sets, also the specific plan boundary. So in this case, we will not only compare the attribute table and uh, uh, we are also checking the geospatial relationship of each plan. So each city will have many plans. So we want to make sure the consistent information are in the uh, boundary layer and uh, parcel level data sets. So it will require us to do both geospatial analysis, also com compare the uh, attribute table. Um, we basically look city, city by city and uh, our script will help us to um, automate the process. Basically for each city, we'll look into each parcel and uh, do the uh, spatial join. Uh, and then uh, using the most recently, I think most recently as we come up with the, with a solution to embrace the uh, pandas uh, data frame. If you're familiar with the pandas, it has, it has a library that uh, can analyze, uh, do analysis on um, tables. Uh, and as we develop this uh, geo accessor spatial enabled pandas data, uh, data frame, it allows us to uh, extract the information directly from the feature layer and uh, convert that to a, a easily used analysis, uh, easily used uh, table and do the joining. We can do everything you've, you're familiar in the pandas library um, in, the, in a GIS data format. So, uh, if you want if more information, we can de definitely share the methodology we, de we detailed. Uh, we can de um, we have documentation for uh, the detailed methodology we applied in the QC process. Um, uh, definitely a full loop and also the uh, the the geo analysis tool uh, that that as real available currently available uh, the most most mostly used component in our script and checking all the fields, all the geospatial consistency. I hope this answers your question, but please feel free to reach out to us. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay. Thanks, Mengdi. And also I, I, in the chat box, I would I put the contact uh, information, uh, Mengdi's email and also my email. So if you have any question, feel free to contact us. And also I see another, Question from Chris, uh, have you done any work to set up your scripts as script tools in ArcGIS Pro? 
Yes, uh, I think this is one of the way uh, uh, we can uh, share our script with other uh, GIS tab or other planners. So uh, we we haven't you know developed those kind of tools much, but we uh, we actually create those kind of tools using the script tools uh, for our own internal purpose and also SCAG, uh, we are uh, planning to uh, develop to more tools so that other uh, SCAG's internal planners can utilize those tools in our enterprise portal. So there, I mean, there are a bunch of great tools in ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Online, but still uh, there are times, you know, we kind of need it for any customized uh, workflow customized uh, tools. So for those kind of situation, we we create a script tool so that we share those kind of script with uh, internal staff. Yeah. Hopefully that answers to your question. So okay, uh, maybe do you see any other questions? Um, I don't see any other. Um, there's another question in the chat about curious if a schema and land use code among all the county accessor office parcel layer are very different. Uh, I mean, I imagine that could be tough to consolidate if they are. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we have been looking into all the, um, we, we basically collect all, um, all the assessor tax roll from each county of a we have six county. We we have been collecting this information and looks through their code um, and uh, try to con tra try to um, translate the code to our SCAG standardized land use code. Um, and uh, um, basically, given the amount of uh, um, different land use, we have been applying Python to help us uh, look into the. Um, uh, the received the sets and uh, come up with the uh, consistent attribute table so we can um, have a standardized um, parcel level land use data sets. Mm. Yeah, Python pro programming is really helpful in this uh, kind of data manipulation. We would like to share more if you, you, you're interested in this workflow. Yeah. So a familiar name here in the chat box. Okay, thanks, Mengdi. So, yeah, so just like uh, Mengdi mentioned, we have six counties, 191 cities and six counties. So we are uh, handling uh, land use code for the 197 local jurisdictions. So for the st land use standardization process, we needed to develop the correspondence table uh, translating local code into uh, SCAX code. Okay. And another question, uh, can Python automation also be applied outside of S3 software, such as in open source QGIS? Andy, um, you, I would say, mm -hmm. yeah, I can answer this question. So if you, if your script apply libraries like the, developed by Azure, like ArcPy, I think it, it will be a little bit difficult to incorporate a platform like like a QJS, but there are certain, um, I, I believe there are certain libraries, uh, open open o open source libraries that you can use, like uh, the um, GeoPandas. Uh, I think that's that's something I previously used, like the intersection, like the geo, geo, um, spatial join. I think that pro uh, geo processing tool are similar to ArcPy. Uh, that's something you can definitely um, use to um, to make a little bit of customization to incorporate it into the to the QGIS pro, um, platform. Uh, and also um, other libraries like uh, PostGIS, I think they have a, they also have available um, tools that that can that can be easily um, grabbed from the um, internet. It can you use uh, Work same, it just works similarly. Um, yeah. Uh, if that's only uh, if the script was developed based on the Azure product, probably it's difficult to to use. But I think uh, Skag also provide license for our local jurisdictions. Uh, if if 
John, probably we can we can check that if we our uh, if that if that that kind of lessons we can provide for for our member agency or um yeah uh, yeah yeah def definitely yeah we can look into that yeah so and okay so are, are there any other questions uh, I think uh, we we covered pretty much all the questions oh. Okay, so I see another question. Among the 191 cities, are there many that uh, do not have or use S3 products? So yeah, I think one of the, our slide, uh, I kind of briefly mentioned, let me go back to the slide. So uh, 40, uh, when it comes to GIS uh, capability, uh, based on our survey, 43% of our 100 97 local jurisdiction have no in-house GIS support. So, and uh, we observe quite a lot of Dumbo jurisdiction, especially small uh, size jurisdiction, they didn't have S3 licenses. So what uh, SCAG uh, as a regional planning agency did, you know, along with our RDP, the regional data platform effort, we actually developed uh, a program. We partnered with S3 uh, to provide a complementary uh, S3 uh, license for our local jurisdiction. So it started, uh, I think, two years ago, and then that program, uh, the first round of the program ended last October. And then uh, we kind of started, uh, we also partnered with S3 to start the second round of uh, local uh, uh, license program. So what we uh, are doing is, uh, S3 is uh, providing complementary license for uh, 50 local jurisdictions, 50 target local jurisdictions in the SCAC region, and then for the one year, and then uh, so during the the one year, local those 50 local jurisdiction can get uh, complementary license, S3 license. So uh, and then after that, you know, and then after evaluation and, and assessment, then uh, those local jurisdiction will also need to directly with uh, S3 for the further. Or utilization, but that is that is what uh, SCAG has been doing, you know, to facilitate uh, local jurisdictions' uh, GIS capability. Okay, hope that answered to your questions. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions? I believe we captured most. So okay. Uh, uh, before we end today's session, Jennifer, if you can uh, share the slide for the, the QR code. So uh, before we uh, end today's session, it would be greatly appreciated if you can take a quick two minute uh, survey uh, to help us to improve our future toolbox Tuesday. And yes, uh, so we are very interested in you know, hearing from you all how, how we did and then what else you are interested in learning you know through the future toolbox tuesday session so yeah that's that's it for today and i really appreciate my colleague meng Lee, you know for today's presentation and also uh i also especially you know thanks skag gis team for for their great teamwork you know they they did all those great job together so and thank you everyone for participating in today's toolbox tuesday session and hope you all have great rest of your afternoon today Thank you. Thank you.